right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is change of variables or transformation of variables. You guys have already seen an example of this. We could take an exam or an integral where we'd have some function of x and y, and we could put that instead of x's and y's into r's and thetas. So we would have to transform our function into a function with r's and thetas in it. Um, and then we would have to tack on that r, dr, d theta. So switching to polar coordinates is a transformation of variables. It takes x's and y's, and it does some kind of function. So t is just some function. And what it will spit out is r's and thetas. Now the functions that we have for polar coordinates are like x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine of theta, etc. Um, but we can do a transformation of variables onto any variable system. So let's say that we have some vector. The vector has x's in it and y's in it. And x's and y's have u's and v's. All right, so that means that the first component of this R is going to have some U's and V's in it. The second component is going to have some U's and V's in it, but the first thing we have this in terms of is X and Y. So what we're essentially doing here is we are transforming X's and Y's over to U's and V's. Now, we're going to do this by finding the area, an area of a parallelogram. Because if we add up all of the areas of the parallelograms, we can get our surface. So if I take a partial of R with respect to U, I would get a partial of X with respect to U and a partial of Y with respect to U. And then if I took a partial of R with respect to V, I would take the partial of X with respect to V and the partial of y with respect to v. And if I find the cross product of these two things, I could write this cross product. I'm sorry, that's I just wrote that a little bit weird. Let's try that again. I want to find r sub u cross r sub v. And if I so if I write out this cross product, it would be partial x, partial u, and partial y, partial u in the very top component. And then in the bottom one, it would be partial x, partial v, partial y, partial v in the bottom component. Um, because when we find a cross product, we multiply this upper diagonal. Because it's multiplication, it doesn't matter whether I do this guy first and then this guy, or this guy and this guy. So I could switch those. I'm going to switch them. Partial x, partial u, partial y. I'm sorry, that I wanted to switch them. Partial x, partial v, partial y, partial u, partial y, partial V. This matrix that I just found, this cross product right there, this is called the Jacobian. It's called the Jacobian of the transformation. Um, it is notated, I'll have to kind of include that in here, it's notated as del xy over del uv is just the notation for that Jacobian. Now what this allows us to do is take any integral, so we can have any integral that's got x's and y's in it, and transform it into another integral that now would have u's and v's, and when we do this, we have to multiply by the absolute value of that Jacobian. Partial u v. And now at the end of this, we would have a du dv. 
Right? So when we transfer variables, we have to tack on this Jacobian just like we would tack on the RDRD theta. The other thing that also does need to get transferred in all of this is that you start with a 2D region that you're transferring over. You also have to find an image. In other words, what does that function do? What does that transformation do to that two-dimensional region? And you have to redefine that for your new integral. And so there's kind of two different pieces in here, the Jacobian piece and then the image piece. Let's do an example. Okay, so let's transform the integral x minus y over x plus y. Notice that this is an integral that we cannot, we don't know how to integrate as it is. Um, and let's uh, use a transformation. I'm giving you the transformation, so I'm giving you kind of the functions that's going to transform this. Um, where R, so our original region, and I'm going to have to graph it so that we can then figure out what our new region looks like. So where R is the, I actually want to move these axes over a little bit so I have a little bit more room here. It's a square with vertices 0, 2, 1, 1, um, 2, 2, and 1, 3. So there's 2, 3, and 1 there, 1, and 2 there. So here is our original square. And we are going to need to transfer this over as well as find the Jacobian. Um, so let's start with um, well, let's start with the image. So what we need to do is transfer this over so that we have a we're going to get a new image on the UV plane. We're going to need to do this line by line. We've got one, two, let's call that line two, and we'll label these as well. Uh, line three, and a line four. So each different line we're going to have to find in terms of U's and V's. Okay, so let's start with line one. Now if we define line 1, this would be the line y equals negative x plus 2. And if I add x over, I've got y plus x equals 2. So this is now a line y plus x in our transformation is v. So this is now the line v equals 2. So it's the line v equals 2. And this original line, x was going from 0 to uh, 1 on it. So x went from x went from 0 to 1. And so that means that our u, so it means that u, u is x minus y. So I've got x minus a negative x. That's two x's minus two. And since x goes from zero to one, u on this line is going to go from negative one, I'm plugging in x equals zero right there, to, I'm gonna plug in one, one minus one would be one. So u is going to go from negative 1 to 1. Something is not quite right here. I did something wrong. What did I do? So for u, at y is negative x plus 2. There it is. This should be a minus 2. So when I plugged it in up here, I've got x minus x. That's a 2x. And then I've got to subtract 2. Subtract 2. All right, so now let me reevaluate u. When x is 0, u is going to be negative 2. Okay, and then when x is 1, u is 0. 
Okay, so now line one in my new graph is now the line where v equals two, so it's where v equals two, and u goes from zero to negative two. So there's two, there's negative two. So now this is my new line one in the uv plane. Line two. All right, line two, if we define that line, that is the line y equals x, and so if I subtract over x, it would be equal 0, and y minus x is negative u, but if negative u equals 0, that's u equals 0. Then we'd have to worry about v. So on this line 2, v is equal to um, x plus y, and y is x, so v is equal to 2x. And x's in that line 2 go from, looks like 1 to 2, so that means v is going to go from, so v, when x is 1, it goes from 2 to 4. Okay, so line 2 is the line u equals 0 from 2 to 4. So 2, 4. So line 2 is right there. Line 3. So line 3 is the line y equals negative x plus 4. That line would have a y-intercept up here of 4. Um, so that means that I've got a y plus x, y plus x is v, so this is the line v equals 4. And on that line 3, x is bounded by 1 and 2. And if I solve for u here, u is x minus that y, so u would be 2x, x minus x, minus when x is 1, u is going to be negative 2, and when x is 2, u is going to be 0. So this is the line v equals 4 from negative 2 to 0. So there's line 3, and one more, and I bet you, you can guess where it where it's going to connect in here, at least it better if it doesn't. We've done some of the, something wrong in the math. So line 4 is the line y equals x plus 2. If I subtract x, that gives me a negative u. So u would be negative 2 for that line. And then that line 4x goes from 0 to 1. And if I define v, v is x plus that y. So that's 2x plus 2. Plug in x equals 0, and we get 2. Plug in 1, we get 4. So let's verify this. This is the line u equals negative 2. Yes, it is. And it goes from 2 to 4. Okay, so there is our transformation of the, um, of the image. So now what we need to do is find the Jacobian of all of this. Um, and in order to do that, I need an x equals and a y equals. So I know that, I know u is equal to x minus y. So that means that x is equal to u plus y. And then, I do the same thing with v, which is x plus y, and I'll solve it for x again. x is equal to, um, uh, what would that be, v minus y. If I set those two x's equal to each other, I'm going to add y over, subtract u, so y is going to be one-half 
v minus u. And if you do something similar like with this, with x's, you would find that x is going to be 1 half v plus u. All right, so now for the Jacobian. So for the Jacobian, uh, we need to find a determinant of this top left component is the partial of x with respect to u. That's 1 half. This top right is the partial of x with respect to v. That's another 1 half. The bottom left is the partial of y with respect to u. So that is a negative 1 half. And the bottom right is a partial of y with respect to v. So that's a 1 half. I'm going to take the cross product of this. We do 1 half times 1 half, so that's 1 fourth. And then we subtract the other diagonal, which is a minus 1 fourth. So we're going to add 1 fourth, and 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is 1 half. All right, here's what this did for us. This now takes our, our original integral. Our original integral now becomes... Um, let's see, actually, I can write out that original integral. x minus y over x plus y dA is equal to the integral. Now, this x minus y, x minus y is u, divided by the um, x plus y, which is v. I need to multiply by the Jacobian. And now I need to integrate with respect to u and v. And if I look back up to this picture that I now have with u's and v's, my uv plane, u goes from negative 2 to 0. So if I do u first on the inner integral, it goes from negative 2 to 0. v is on the outer one, and v goes from 2 to 4. And I think that's a pretty easy integral to evaluate. So I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change this problem just a little bit. I don't feel like we need to evaluate that right now. Let's use the transformation to, let's just set up that double integral um, using the transformation and not evaluate it.